Nataji Subhas Chandra Bose, the 23rd of January 1897 to the 18th of August 1945, was an Indian nationalist whose defiant patriotism made him a hero in India, but whose attempt during World War II to rid India of British rule with the help of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan left an ambivalent legacy. The honorific Nataji, Hindustani, respected leader. The name granted to him in the early 1940s by the Indian soldiers of the Indish Legion and by the German and Indian officials in the Special Bureau for India in Berlin was later used throughout India. Bose had been a leader of the younger, radical wing of the Indian National Congress in the late 1920s and 1930s, rising to become Congress president in 1938 and 1939. However, he was ousted from Congress leadership positions in 1939 following differences with Mahatma Gandhi and the Congress High Command. He was subsequently placed under house arrest by the British before escaping from India in 1940. Bose arrived in Germany in April 1941, where the leadership offered unexpected, if sometimes ambivalent, sympathy for the cause of India's independence, contrasting starkly with its attitudes towards other colonized peoples and ethnic communities. In November 1941, with German funds, a Free India Centre was set up in Berlin, and soon a Free India Radio, on which Bose broadcast nightly. A 3,000-strong Free India Legion, comprising Indians captured by Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps, was also formed to aid in a possible future German land invasion of India. By spring 1942, in light of Japanese victories in Southeast Asia and changing German priorities, a German invasion of India became untenable, and Bose became keen to move to Southeast Asia. Adolf Hitler, during his only meeting with Bose in late May 1942, suggested the same, and offered to arrange for a submarine. During this time Bose also became a father, his wife, or companion, Emily Schenkel, whom he had met in 1934, gave birth to a baby girl in November 1942. Identifying strongly with the Axis powers, and no longer apologetically, Bose boarded a German submarine in February 1943. In Madagascar, he was transferred to a Japanese submarine from which he disembarked in Japanese held Sumatra in May 1943. With Japanese support, Bose revamped the Indian National Army, INA, then composed of Indian soldiers of the British Indian Army who had been captured in the Battle of Singapore. To these, after Bose's arrival, were added enlisting Indian civilians in Malaya and Singapore. The Japanese had come to support a number of puppet and provisional governments in the captured regions, such as those in Burma, the Philippines and Manchukuo. Before long the provisional government of Free India, presided by Bose, was formed in the Japanese-occupied Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Bose had great drive and charisma—creating popular Indian slogans, such as, Jai Hind. And the Aina under Bose was a model of diversity by region, ethnicity, religion, and even gender. However, Bose was regarded by the Japanese as being militarily unskilled, and his military effort was short-lived. In late 1944 and early 1945 the British Indian Army first halted and then devastatingly reversed the Japanese attack on India. Almost half the Japanese forces and fully half the participating Aina contingent were killed. The Aina was driven down the Malay Peninsula, and surrendered with the recapture of Singapore. Bose had earlier chosen not to surrender with his forces or with the Japanese, but rather to escape to Manchuria with a view to seeking a future in the Soviet Union which he believed to be turning anti-British. He died from third-degree burns received when his plane crashed in Taiwan. Some Indians, however, did not believe that the crash had occurred, with many among them, especially in Bengal, believing that Bose would return to gain India's independence. The Indian National Congress, the main instrument of Indian nationalism, praised Bose's patriotism but distanced itself from his tactics and ideology, especially his collaboration with fascism. The now waning post-war British Raj, though it had never been seriously threatened by the INA during the war, initially charged 300 INA officers with treason in the INA trials, but eventually backtracked in the face of popular sentiment, and also while taking stock of the imminent departure of the British administration from India. Biography <inaudible> 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 Topic: 1897 to 1921, early life. 
Subhas Chandra Bose was born on 23 January 1897 at 12.10 p.m. in Cuttack, Orissa Division, Bengal Province, to Prabhavati Dutt Bose and Janakinath Bose, an advocate belonging to a Kayastha family. He was the ninth in a family of 14 children. His family was well-to-do, he was admitted to the Protestant European School presently Stuart High School in Cuttack, like his brothers and sisters, in January 1902. He continued his studies at this school which was run by the Baptist Mission up to 1909 and then shifted to the Ravenshaw Collegiate School. Here, he was ridiculed by his fellow students because he knew very little Bengali. The day Subhas was admitted to this school, Beni Madhab Das, the headmaster, understood how brilliant and scintillating his genius was. After securing the second position in the matriculation examination in 1913, he got admitted to the Presidency College where he studied briefly. He was influenced by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda and Ramakrishna after reading their works at the age of 16. He felt that his religion was more important than his studies. In those days, the British in Calcutta often made offensive remarks to the Indians in public places and insulted them openly. This behavior of the British as well as the outbreak of World War I began to influence his thinking. His nationalistic temperament came to light when he was expelled for assaulting Professor Oden who had manhandled some Indian students for the latter's anti-India comments. He was expelled although he appealed that he only witnessed the assault and did not actually participate in it. He later joined the Scottish Church College at the University of Calcutta and passed his BA in 1918 in philosophy. Bose left India in 1919 for England with a promise to his father that he would appear in the Indian Civil Services ICS examination. He went to study in Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge and matriculated on 19 November 1919. He came fourth in the ICS examination and was selected, but he did not want to work under an alien government which would mean serving the British. As he stood on the verge of taking the plunge by resigning from the Indian Civil Service in 1921, he wrote to his elder brother Surat Chandra Bose, "...only on the soil of sacrifice and suffering can we raise our national edifice." He resigned from his civil service job on 23 April 1921 and returned to India. Topic. 1921–1932, Indian National Congress and Prison He started the newspaper Swaraj and took charge of publicity for the Bengal Provincial Congress Committee. His mentor was Chittaranjan Das who was a spokesman for aggressive nationalism in Bengal. In the year 1923, Bose was elected the President of All India Youth Congress and also the Secretary of Bengal State Congress. He was also the editor of the newspaper, Forward, founded by Chittaranjan Das. Bose worked as the CEO of the Calcutta Municipal Corporation for Das when the latter was elected mayor of Calcutta in 1924. In a roundup of nationalists in 1925, Bose was arrested and sent to prison in Mandalay, where he contracted tuberculosis. In 1927, after being released from prison, Bose became general secretary of the Congress Party and worked with Jawaharlal Nehru for independence. In late December 1928, Bose organized the annual meeting of the Indian National Congress in Calcutta. His most memorable role was as General Officer Commanding GOC Congress Volunteer Corps. Author Narad Chaudhary wrote about the meeting, Bose organized a volunteer corps in uniform, its officers were even provided with steel-cut epaulettes. His uniform was made by a firm of British tailors in Calcutta, Harmons. A telegram addressed to him as GOC was delivered to the British general in Fort William and was the subject of a good deal of malicious gossip in the British Indian press. Mahatma Gandhi as a sincere pacifist vowed to non-violence, did not like the strutting, clicking of boots, and saluting, and he afterward described the Calcutta session of the Congress as a Bertram Mills circus, which caused a great deal of indignation among the Bengalis. A little later, Bose was again arrested and jailed for civil disobedience, this time he emerged to become mayor of Calcutta in 1930. 1933–1937, Illness, Austria, Emily Schenkel During the mid-1930s Bose travelled in Europe, visiting Indian students and European politicians, including Benito Mussolini. He observed party organization and saw communism and fascism in action. 
In this period, he also researched and wrote the first part of his book The Indian Struggle, which covered the country's independence movement in the years 1920–1934. Although it was published in London in 1935, the British government banned the book in the colony out of fears that it would encourage unrest. Topic 1938 to 1941 Forward Bloc. By 1938, Bose had become a leader of national stature and agreed to accept nomination as Congress president. He stood for unqualified Swaraj, self-governance, including the use of force against the British. This meant a confrontation with Mohandas Gandhi, who in fact opposed Bose's presidency, splitting the Indian National Congress Party. Bose attempted to maintain unity, but Gandhi advised Bose to form his own cabinet. The rift also divided Bose and Nehru. Bose appeared at the 1939 Congress meeting on a stretcher. He was elected president again over Gandhi's preferred candidate Patabi Siddharamaya. U. Mudaramalingam Thavar strongly supported Bose in the intra-Congress dispute. Thavar mobilized all South India votes for Bose. However, due to the maneuverings of the Gandhi-led clique in the Congress Working Committee, Bose found himself forced to resign from the Congress presidency. On the 22nd of June 1939, Bose organized the All India Forward Bloc, a faction within the Indian National Congress, aimed at consolidating the political left, but its main strength was in his home state, Bengal. U. Mudaramalingam Thavar, who was a staunch supporter of Bose from the beginning, joined the Forward Bloc. When Bose visited Madurai on 6 September, Thavar organized a massive rally as his reception. When Subhash Chandra Bose was heading to Madurai, on an invitation of Mudaramalinga Thavar to amass support for the forward bloc, he passed through Madras and spent three days at Gandhi Peak. His correspondence reveals that despite his clear dislike for British subjugation, he was deeply impressed by their methodical and systematic approach and their steadfastly disciplinarian outlook towards life. In England, he exchanged ideas on the future of India with British Labour Party leaders and political thinkers like Lord Halifax, George Lansbury, Clement Attlee, Arthur Greenwood, Harold Lasky, J.B.S. Haldane, Ivor Jennings, G.D.H. Cole, Gilbert Murray and Sir Stafford Cripps. He came to believe that an independent India needed socialist authoritarianism, on the lines of Turkey's Kemal Ataturk, for at least two decades. For political reasons Bose was refused permission by the British authorities to meet Ataturk at Ankara. During his sojourn in England Bose tried to schedule appointments with several politicians, but only the Labour Party and Liberal politicians agreed to meet with him. Conservative Party officials refused to meet him or show him courtesy because he was a politician coming from a colony. In the 1930s leading figures in the Conservative Party had opposed even Dominion status for India. It was during the Labour Party government of 1945-1951, with Attlee as the Prime Minister, that India gained independence. On the outbreak of war, Bose advocated a campaign of mass civil disobedience to protest against Viceroy Lord Linlithgow's decision to declare war on India's behalf without consulting the Congress leadership. Having failed to persuade Gandhi of the necessity of this, Bose organized mass protests in Calcutta calling for the Holwell Monument commemorating the Black Hole of Calcutta, which then stood at the corner of Dalhousie Square, to be removed. He was thrown in jail by the British, but was released following a seven-day hunger strike. Bose's house in Calcutta was kept under surveillance by the CID. Topic. 1941–1943, Nazi Germany Bose's arrest and subsequent release set the scene for his escape to Germany, via Afghanistan and the Soviet Union. A few days before his escape, he sought solitude and, on this pretext, avoided meeting British guards and grew a beard. Late night 16 January 1941, the night of his escape, he dressed as a Pathan brown long coat, a black fez-type coat and broad pajamas to avoid being identified. Bose escaped from under British surveillance from his Elgin Road house in Calcutta about 1.25 a.m. on 17 January 1941, accompanied by his nephew Sasir Kumar Bose in a German-made Wanderer W24 sedan car, which would take him to Gomo Railway Station in then state of Bihar, India. The car registration no. Bla 7, was bought by Subhash Chandra Bose's elder brother Surat Chandra Bose in 1937. 
The car is now on display at his Elgin Road home in Calcutta, India. He journeyed to Peshawar with the help of the Abwehr, where he was met by Akbar Shah, Muhammad Shah, and Bhagat Ram Talwar. Bose was taken to the home of Abad Khan, a trusted friend of Akbar Shah's. On 26 January 1941, Bose began his journey to reach Russia through British India's northwest frontier with Afghanistan. For this reason, he enlisted the help of Mian Akbar Shah, then a forward bloc leader in the northwest frontier province. Shah had been out of India en route to the Soviet Union, and suggested a novel disguise for Bose to assume. Since Bose could not speak one word of Pashto, it would make him an easy target of Pashto speakers working for the British. For this reason, Shah suggested that Bose act deaf and dumb, and let his beard grow to mimic those of the tribesmen. Bose's guide Bhagat Ram Talwar, unknown to him, was a Soviet agent. Supporters of the Aga Khan III helped him across the border into Afghanistan where he was met by an Abwehr unit posing as a party of road construction engineers from the organization TOTE who then aided his passage across Afghanistan via Kabul to the border with Soviet Russia. After assuming the guise of a Pashtun insurance agent, Ziodin, to reach Afghanistan, Bose changed his guise and traveled to Moscow on the Italian passport of an Italian nobleman. Count Orlando Matsoda. From Moscow, he reached Rome, and from there he traveled to Germany. Once in Russia the NKVD transported Bose to Moscow where he hoped that Russia's traditional enmity to British rule in India would result in support for his plans for a popular rising in India. However, Bose found the Soviets' response disappointing and was rapidly passed over to the German ambassador in Moscow, Count von der Schulenberg. He had Bose flown on to Berlin in a special courier aircraft at the beginning of April where he was to receive a more favorable hearing from Joachim von Ribbentrop and the foreign ministry officials at the Wilhelmstrasse. In Germany, he was attached to the Special Bureau for India under Adam von Trott zu Sols which was responsible for broadcasting on the German-sponsored Azad Hind radio. He founded the Free India Centre in Berlin, and created the Indian Legion consisting of some 4,500 soldiers out of Indian prisoners of war who had previously fought for the British in North Africa prior to their capture by Axis forces. The Indian Legion was attached to the Wehrmacht, and later transferred to the Waffen-SS. Its members swore the following allegiance to Hitler and Bose. I swear by God this holy oath that I will obey the leader of the German race and state, Adolf Hitler, as the commander of the German armed forces in the fight for India, whose leader is Subhas Chandra Bose." This oath clearly abrogates control of the Indian Legion to the German armed forces whilst stating Bose's overall leadership of India. He was also, however, prepared to envisage an invasion of India via the USSR by Nazi troops, spearheaded by the Azad Hind Legion. Many have questioned his judgment here, as it seems unlikely that the Germans could have been easily persuaded to leave after such an invasion, which might also have resulted in an Axis victory in the war. In all, 3,000 Indian prisoners of war signed up for the Free India Legion. But instead of being delighted, Bose was worried. A left-wing admirer of Russia, he was devastated when Hitler's tanks rolled across the Soviet border. Matters were worsened by the fact that the now-retreating German army would be in no position to offer him help in driving the British from India. When he met Hitler in May 1942, his suspicions were confirmed, and he came to believe that the Nazi leader was more interested in using his men to win propaganda victories than military ones. So, in February 1943, Bose turned his back on his legionnaires and slipped secretly away aboard a submarine bound for Japan. This left the men he had recruited leaderless and demoralized in Germany. Bose lived in Berlin from 1941 until 1943. During his earlier visit to Germany in 1934, he had met Emily Schenkel, the daughter of an Austrian veterinarian whom he married in 1937. Their daughter is Anita Bose Pfaff. Bose's party, the forward bloc, has contested this fact. Topic: 1943 to 1945, Japanese high water mark of expansion into northeast India. In 1943, after being disillusioned that Germany could be of any help in gaining India's independence, he left for Japan. He travelled with the German submarine U-180 around the Cape of Good Hope to the southeast of Madagascar, where he was transferred to the I-29 for the rest of the journey to Imperial Japan. 
This was the only civilian transfer between two submarines of two different navies in World War II. The Indian National Army INA was the brainchild of Japanese Major and post-war Lieutenant General Awaichi Fujiwara, had the Japanese intelligence unit Fujiwara Kakan and had its origins, first in the meetings between Fujiwara and the president of the Bangkok chapter of the Indian Independence League, Pritam Singh Dillon, and then, through Pritam Singh's network, in the recruitment by Fujiwara of a captured British Indian Army captain, Mohan Singh on the Western Malayan Peninsula in December 1941, Fujiwara's mission was, "...to raise an army which would fight alongside the Japanese army." After the initial proposal by Fujiwara the Indian National Army was formed as a result of discussion between Fujiwara and Mohan Singh in the second half of December 1941, and the name chosen jointly by them in the first week of January 1942, this was along the concept of—and with support of what was then known as the Indian Independence League, headed by expatriate nationalist leader Rash Bihari Bose. The first INA was however disbanded in December 1942 after disagreements between the Hikari Kakan and Mohan Singh, who came to believe that the Japanese high command was using the INA as a mere pawn and propaganda tool. Mohan Singh was taken into custody and the troops returned to the prisoner of war camp. However, the idea of an independence army was revived with the arrival of Subhas Chandra Bose in the Far East in 1943. In July, at a meeting in Singapore, Rash Bihari Bose handed over control of the organization to Subhas Chandra Bose. Bose was able to reorganize the fledgling army and organize massive support among the expatriate Indian population in Southeast Asia, who lent their support by both enlisting in the Indian National Army, as well as financially in response to Bose's calls for sacrifice for the independence cause. Ina had a separate women's unit, the Rani of Jhansi Regiment named after Rani Lakshmi Bai headed by Capt. Lakshmi Swami Nathan, which is seen as a first of its kind in Asia, even when faced with military reverses, Bose was able to maintain support for the Azad Hind movement. Spoken as a part of a motivational speech for the Indian National Army at a rally of Indians in Burma on 4 July 1944, Bose's most famous quote was, Give me blood, and I shall give you freedom. In this, he urged the people of India to join him in his fight against the British Raj. Spoken in Hindi, Bose's words are highly evocative. The troops of the Aina were under the aegis of a provisional government, the Azad Hind government, which came to produce its own currency, postage stamps, court and civil code, and was recognized by nine Axis states—Germany, Japan, Italian Social Republic, the independent state of Croatia, Wang Jingwei regime in Nanjing, China, a provisional government of Burma, Manchukuo and Japanese-controlled Philippines. Recent researches have shown that the USSR too had diplomatic contact with the Provisional Government of Free India. Of those countries, five were authorities established under Axis occupation. This government participated in the so called Greater East Asia Conference as an observer in November 1943. The INA's first commitment was in the Japanese thrust towards eastern Indian frontiers of Manipur. INA's special forces, the Bahadur Group, were extensively involved in operations behind enemy lines both during the diversionary attacks in Arakan, as well as the Japanese thrust towards Imphal and Kohima, along with the Burmese National Army led by Ba Ma and Aung San. The Japanese also took possession of Andaman and Nicobar Islands in 1942 and a year later, the Provisional Government and the INA were established in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands with LT Call. A. D. Loganathan appointed its Governor General. The islands were renamed Shahid Martyr and Swaraj Independence. However, the Japanese Navy remained in essential control of the islands' administration. During Bose's only visit to the islands in early 1944, apparently in the interest of shielding Bose from attaining a full knowledge of ultimate Japanese intentions, Bose's Japanese hosts carefully isolated him from the local population. At that time the island's Japanese administration had been torturing the leader of the island's Indian Independence League, Dr. Dewan Singh, who later died of his injuries in the cellular jail. During Bose's visit to the islands several locals attempted to alert Bose to Dr. Singh's plight, but apparently without success. During this time Lieutenant Colonel Loganathan became aware of his lack of any genuine administrative control and resigned in protest as Governor General, later returning to the government's headquarters in Rangoon, on the Indian mainland. An Indian tricolor, modelled after that of the Indian National Congress, was raised for the first time in the town of Morung, in Manipur, in northeastern India. 
The adjacent towns of Kohima and Imphal were then encircled and placed under siege by divisions of the Japanese army, working in conjunction with the Burmese National Army, and with brigades of the Aina, known as the Gandhi and Nehru Brigades. This attempt at conquering the Indian mainland had the Axis codename of Operation Ugo. During this operation, on 6 July 1944, in a speech broadcast by the Azad Hind radio from Singapore, Bose addressed Mahatma Gandhi as the father of the nation and asked for his blessings and good wishes for the war he was fighting. This was the first time that Gandhi was referred to by this appellation. The protracted Japanese attempts to take these two towns depleted Japanese resources, with Operation Yugo ultimately proving unsuccessful. Through several months of Japanese onslaught on these two towns, Commonwealth forces remained entrenched in the towns. Commonwealth forces then counter-attacked, inflicting serious losses on the Axis-led forces, who were then forced into a retreat back into Burmese territory. After the Japanese defeat at the battles of Kohima and Imphal, Bose's provisional government's aim of establishing a base in mainland India was lost forever. Still the Aina fought in key battles against the British Indian Army in Burmese territory, notable in Maikatiya, Mandalay, Pegu, Nyongyu and Mount Popa. However, with the fall of Rangoon, Bose's government ceased to be an effective political entity. A large proportion of the Aina troops surrendered under LT Colonel Loganathan. The remaining troops retreated with Bose towards Malaya or made for Thailand. Japan's surrender at the end of the war also led to the surrender of the remaining elements of the Indian National Army. The Aina prisoners were then repatriated to India and some tried for treason. The 18th of August 1945, death In the consensus of scholarly opinion, Subhas Chandra Bose's death occurred from third-degree burns on 18 August 1945 after his overloaded Japanese plane crashed in Japanese-ruled Formosa now Taiwan. However, many among his supporters, especially in Bengal, refused at the time, and have refused since, to believe either the fact or the circumstances of his death. Conspiracy theories appeared within hours of his death and have thereafter had a long shelf life, keeping alive various martial myths about bows. In Taihoku, at around 2.30 p.m. as the bomber with bows on board was leaving the standard path taken by aircraft during takeoff, the passengers inside heard a loud sound, similar to an engine backfiring. The mechanics on the tarmac saw something fall out of the plane. It was the portside engine, or a part of it, and the propeller. The plane swung wildly to the right and plummeted, crashing, breaking into two, and exploding into flames. Inside, the chief pilot, co-pilot and Lieutenant General Tsunamasa Shide, the vice chief of staff of the Japanese Kwantung Army, who was to have made the negotiations for Bose with the Soviet Army in Manchuria, were instantly killed. Bose's assistant Habibur Rahman was stunned, passing out briefly, and Bose, although conscious and not fatally hurt, was soaked in gasoline. When Rahman came to, he and Bose attempted to leave by the rear door, but found it blocked by the luggage. They then decided to run through the flames and exit from the front. The ground staff, now approaching the plane, saw two people staggering towards them, one of whom had become a human torch. The human torch turned out to be Bose, whose gasoline-soaked clothes had instantly ignited. Rahman and a few others managed to smother the flames, but also noticed that Bose's face and head appeared badly burned. According to Joyce Chapman Lebra, a truck which served as ambulance rushed Bose and the other passengers to the Nanman Military Hospital south of Taihoku. The airport personnel called Dr. Tanyoshi Yoshimi, the surgeon in charge at the hospital at around 3 p.m. Bose was conscious and mostly coherent when they reached the hospital, and for some time thereafter. Bose was naked, except for a blanket wrapped around him, and Dr. Yoshimi immediately saw evidence of third-degree burns on many parts of the body, especially on his chest, doubting very much that he would live. Dr. Yoshimi promptly began to treat Bose and was assisted by Dr. Saruta. According to historian Leonard A. Gordon, who interviewed all the hospital personnel later, a disinfectant, Rivamol, was put over most of his body and then a white ointment was applied and he was bandaged over most of his body. Dr. Yoshimi gave Bose four injections of Vita Camphor and two of Digitamine for his weakened heart. These were given about every 30 minutes. Since his body had lost fluids quickly upon being burnt, he was also given ringer solution intravenously. A third doctor, Dr. Ishii gave him a blood transfusion. 
an orderly, Kazuo Mitsui, an army private, was in the room and several nurses were also assisting. Bose still had a clear head which Dr. Yoshimi found remarkable for someone with such severe injuries. Soon, in spite of the treatment, Bose went into a coma. A few hours later, between 9 and 10 p.m. local time on Saturday 18 August 1945, Subhas Chandra Bose, aged 48, was dead. Bose's body was cremated in the main Taihoku crematorium two days later, 20 August 1945. On 23 August 1945, the Japanese news agency Duterte announced the death of Bose and Shideya. On 7 September a Japanese officer, Lt. Tatsuo Hayashida, carried Bose's ashes to Tokyo, and the following morning they were handed to the president of the Tokyo Indian Independence League, Rama Murti. On 14 September a memorial service was held for Bose in Tokyo and a few days later the ashes were turned over to the priest of the Renkoji Temple of Nichiren Buddhism in Tokyo. There they have remained ever since. Among the Aina personnel, there was widespread disbelief, shock, and trauma. Most affected were the young Tamil Indians from Malaya and Singapore, both men and women, who comprised the bulk of the civilians who had enlisted in the Aina. The professional soldiers in the Aina, most of whom were Punjabis, faced an uncertain future, with many fatalistically expecting reprisals from the British. In India the Indian National Congress's official line was succinctly expressed in a letter Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi wrote to Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. Said Gandhi, Subhas Bose has died well. He was undoubtedly a patriot, though misguided. Many congressmen had not forgiven Bose for quarreling with Gandhi and for collaborating with what they considered was Japanese fascism. The Indian soldiers in the British Indian Army, some two and a half million of whom had fought during the Second World War, were conflicted about the Aina. Some saw the Aina as traitors and wanted them punished, others felt more sympathetic. The British Raj, though never seriously threatened by the Aina, tried 300 Aina officers for treason in the Aina trials, but eventually backtracked. Legacy On 23 August 2007, Japanese Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe visited the Subhas Chandra Bose Memorial Hall in Kolkata. Abe said to Bose's family the Japanese are deeply moved by Bose's strong will to have led the Indian independence movement from British rule. Nataji is a much respected name in Japan. The following words are inscribed on a brass shield in front of the chair. Nataji Subhash Chandra Bose in order to free India from the shackles of British imperialism organised the Azad Hind government from outside the country on October 21, 1943. Nataji set up the Provisional Government of Independent India Azad Hind and transferred its headquarter at Rangoon on January 7, 1944. On 5 April 1944, the Azad Hind Bank was inaugurated at Rangoon. It was on this occasion that Nataji used this chair for the first time. Later the chair was kept at the residence of Nataji at 51, University Avenue, Rangoon, where the office of the Azad Hind government was also housed. Afterwards, at the time of leaving Burma, the Britishers handed over the chair to the family of Mr. A.T. Ahuja, the well-known business man of Rangoon. The chair was officially handed over to the Government of India in January 1979. It was brought to Calcutta on 17 July 1980. It has now been ceremonially installed at the Red Fort on July 7, 1981. Ideology <inaudible> 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 Bose advocated complete unconditional independence for India, whereas the All India Congress Committee wanted it in phases, through dominion status. Finally at the historic Lahore Congress Convention, the Congress adopted Purna Swaraj complete independence as its motto. Gandhi was given rousing receptions wherever he went after gandhi Irwin Pact. Subhas Chandra Bose, travelling with Gandhi in these endeavours, later wrote that the great enthusiasm he saw among the people enthused him tremendously and that he doubted if any other leader anywhere in the world received such a reception as Gandhi did during these travels across the country. He was imprisoned and expelled from India. Defying the ban, he came back to India and was imprisoned again. Bose was elected president of the Indian National Congress for two consecutive terms, but had to resign from the post following ideological conflicts with Mohandas K. Gandhi and after openly attacking the Congress's foreign and internal policies. 
Bose believed that Gandhi's tactics of non-violence would never be sufficient to secure India's independence, and advocated violent resistance. He established a separate political party, the All India Forward Bloc and continued to call for the full and immediate independence of India from British rule. He was imprisoned by the British authorities eleven times. His stance did not change with the outbreak of the Second World War, which he saw as an opportunity to take advantage of British weakness. At the outset of the war, he left India, travelling to the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, seeking an alliance with each of them to attack the British government in India. With Imperial Japanese assistance, he reorganized and later led the Azad Hind Fauj or Indian National Army INA, formed with Indian prisoners of war and plantation workers from British Malaya, Singapore, and other parts of Southeast Asia, against British forces. With Japanese monetary, political, diplomatic and military assistance, he formed the Azad Hind government in exile, and regrouped and led the Indian National Army in failed military campaigns against the Allies at Imphal and in Burma. His political views and the alliances he made with Nazi and other militarist regimes at war with Britain have been the cause of arguments among historians and politicians, with some accusing him of fascist sympathies, while others in India have been more sympathetic towards the realpolitik that guided his social and political choices. Subhas Chandra Bose believed that the Bhagavad Gita was a great source of inspiration for the struggle against the British. Swami Vivekananda's teachings on universalism, his nationalist thoughts and his emphasis on social service and reform had all inspired Subhas Chandra Bose from his very young days. The fresh interpretation of the India's ancient scriptures had appealed immensely to him. Many scholars believe that Hindu spirituality formed the essential part of his political and social thought throughout his adult life, although there was no sense of bigotry or orthodoxy in it. Subhas who called himself a socialist, believed that socialism in India owed its origins to Swami Vivekananda. As historian Leonard Gordon explains, "...inner religious explorations continued to be a part of his adult life. This set him apart from the slowly growing number of atheistic socialists and communists who dotted the Indian landscape." Bose first expressed his preference for "...a synthesis of what modern Europe calls socialism and fascism." in a 1930 speech in Calcutta. Bose later criticized Nehru's 1933 statement that there is no middle road between communism and fascism, describing it as fundamentally wrong. Bose believed communism would not gain ground in India due to its rejection of nationalism and religion and suggested a synthesis between communism and fascism could take hold instead. In 1944, Bose similarly stated our philosophy should be a synthesis between national socialism and communism. Bose's correspondence prior to 1939 reflects his deep disapproval of the racist practices of, and annulment of democratic institutions in Nazi Germany. Today I regret that I have to return to India with the conviction that the new nationalism of Germany is not only narrow and selfish but arrogant. However, he expressed admiration for the authoritarian methods though not the racial ideologies which he saw in Italy and Germany during the 1930s, and thought they could be used in building an independent India. Bose had clearly expressed his belief that democracy was the best option for India. The pro-Bose thinkers believed that his authoritarian control of the Azad Hind was based on political pragmatism and a post-colonial doctrine rather than any anti-democratic belief. However, during the war and possibly as early as the 1930s, Bose seems to have decided that no democratic system could be adequate to overcome India's poverty and social inequalities, and he wrote that a socialist state similar to that of Soviet Russia, which he had also seen and admired, would be needed for the process of national rebuilding. Accordingly, some suggest that Bose's alliance with the Axis during the war was based on more than just pragmatism, and that Bose was a militant nationalist, though not a Nazi nor a fascist, for he supported empowerment of women, secularism and other liberal ideas. Alternatively, others consider he might have been using populist methods of mobilization common to many post-colonial leaders. His most famous quote was, Give me blood and I will give you freedom. Another famous quote was Dili Kalo, On to Delhi. This was the call he used to give the Aina armies to motivate them. Jai Hind, or Glory to India was another slogan used by him and later adopted by the government of India and the Indian Armed Forces. Another slogan coined by him was, Itihad, Atamid, Kurbani, Urdu for, Unity, Agreement, Sacrifice. 
Aina also used the slogan Inkwalab Zindabad, which was coined by Maulana Hazrat Mohani. In popular media In 2004, Shyam Benegal directed the biographical film, Nataji Subhas Chandra Bose, The Forgotten Hero Depicting His Life in Nazi Germany 1941 in Japanese Occupied Asia 1943 and the events leading to the formation of Azad Hein Fauj. The film received critical acclaim at the BFI London Film Festival, and has garnered the National Film Award for Best Feature Film on National Integration, and the National Film Award for Best Production Design for that year. In 2017, Altbalaji and Big Synergy Media, released a nine-episode web series, Bose, Dead, Alive, which is a dramatized version of the book India's biggest cover up written by Anuj Dar, which starred Bollywood actor Rajkumar Rao as Subhas Chandra Bose and Anna Adore as Emily Schenkel. The series was praised by both audience and critics, for its plot, performance and production design. <laughs> 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 